Well, NeuroChill was designed specifically to counter the effects of cortisol, which is the stress hormone. Okay, now you've also heard of adrenaline, which is the fight or flight hormone. Uh, cortisol comes along and backs that up. Okay, so we'll talk about that more in a minute, but the ingredients in NeuroChill are three ingredients that have all been shown through scientific study to kind of uh, control and modulate cortisol. Now, cortisol and chronic stress has been more publicly aware recently as people are coming to realize that living in an office cubicle and being stressed out all day every day or even for three hours out of every day for example five days a week or even three days a week is ultimately going to cause detriment to your health uh, well-being even your sexual function physique all sorts of things yeah um, chronic stress is associated with heart disease uh, senile dementia um, you know, any number of long-term degenerative conditions, um, obesity, muscle wasting, all sorts of things. Now, uh, as I say, we specifically chose these ingredients and we've got Bacopa, which has been used in Ayurvedic medicine for thousands of years. And although, you know, thousands of years ago, they may not have known what cortisol was or indeed what they were using it for, these days we can appreciate through some of the appliance of science what it actually does. And one of the things it does is it shows a kind of adaptogenic response so the longer you take it the more it conditions the body to be able to tolerate cortisol as well as um, working within the mind to produce a kind of what's called an anxiolytic effect which means it breaks down anxiety or reduces anxiety stress and anxiety are intimately linked and i'll explain why in a minute uh, one of the other ingredients is, is inositol, which is one of the B vitamins or a subfamily of the B vitamins, and it helps cell membrane permeability. Now, if a cell membrane, which is supposed to be kind of semi-fluid and permeable, uh, is what it's supposed to be, then that allows it to get in the nutrients that it needs and expel the waste products that it needs. If it's more rigid and, and more of a closed system, then the system's got to recycle more and you're not getting the fresh stuff in and the old stuff out. The third ingredient is, of course, um, phosphodiesylserine, which is another amino acid, um, and again, is a vital component of the fluidity of cell membranes. So that backs up what the inositol is doing, but it also backs up what the bacopa is doing, because phosphodiesylserine's effect on cortisol on the body is similar to bacopa's effect on cortisol on the mind. So we're getting a mind-body uh, kind of double whammy, if you like, and there will be no point since the mind and the body are so intimately linked, there would be no point just trying to tackle the mind and cortisol because you still got the effects in the body which are gonna jack you up a bit and then that's gonna feed back to the mind and you're gonna be thinking, why is my body not relaxed? You need to tackle the whole system as a, you know, as a, as a one piece. I mean, if we wanna look at some of the, the kind of science or theory behind why our bodies express this kind of inappropriate response, then if we go back to our kind of Paleolithic ancestors, you can imagine that you might be walking along and you turn around a corner or on a rock ledge and suddenly there's a, there's a cave lion there or a saber-toothed tiger sees you and thinks lunch and you, you look at it and think, oh dear, your adrenaline shoots massively skywards, okay? And you can imagine in that scenario either you're gonna be meat and dead within about two minutes or within about 20 minutes you're going to have somehow scrambled your way out of the situation and be sitting up in a tree branch somewhere on a roar on a rock ledge or in a small cave hole breathing deep sighs of relief as your adrenaline and your cortisol come back to normal okay and then you might not have another experience like that for another two weeks or two days or two years or whatever and although we still experience that same kind of thing, for example, in a near-death situation, like you realize that someone's jumped the lights and they're just about to T-bone your car, and suddenly you look and you go, ooh, and then, you know, when you say, you know, you drop your bottle and you massive adrenaline, and then 10 minutes later, you're trembling as you've got that adrenaline withdrawal, but you're also somewhere safe and warm and your cortisol's also come down. Because the function of cortisol Adrenaline is only a short term, it's that immediate turbo boost and then cortisol is there to provide that energy back up as you're sprinting across the plains running away from the saber tooth tiger. But again, that would normally only last probably a maximum of 40 minutes or something. To skip forward to today's real world, which is of course an artificially created environment. 
So you're sitting in your office cubicle and your boss walks past and says, ah, oh, ah, we've got your performance review at the end of the month. You're doing pretty well so far. We have got a couple of issues to iron out. Suddenly you think, ah. Oh. And you're reminded of just the new mortgage that you've just taken out, or the fact that your wife's now pregnant, or you've just bought yourself a car, or but it's usually linked to finance and, this, and you know not being able to provide for your family or for yourself or have a place to live, and that kind of fear response triggers an adrenaline response and the following cortisol response every time you see your boss or think of that new car or the baby or whatever so multiple times per day you're getting a much lesser adrenaline response but you're still getting that cortisol response and that cortisol response probably still hasn't finished before once again you're reminded of the performance review and how much hangs upon it and the fact that you know oh, this is critical so pretty much from nine o'clock or when you first saw your boss until the end of the day no, it's not actually. It's not going to stop at the end of the day just because you leave the work environment. You know, you're going to go home and your wife's going to go, she's going to rub her fat belly and she, you know, pregnant belly and you're going to think, I really hope I do well in this performance review. I've been really counting on moving up a grade. Uh, so every time you look at her, then that's a, that little release. Now we need to stop that because it's totally alien to what the body is expecting. Um, and it, this is what causes that chronic stress and, and you know, Relationships fall apart, but the body falls apart as well, and you can't sleep because you're stressed, and then you perform worse at work, and next thing you're worried even more about the performance review, and, that, and it can all snowball into this massive, horrible scenario. Some of us are better at dealing with stress than others. Exercise is a great way of dealing with stress. Meditation, fantastic. Other people will reach for uh, the alcohol, or the benzodiazepines, or the cannabis, for example, yeah? now. Whilst exercise and meditation I'm fully supportive of, there's other three, whilst you know, uh, they are fairly common ways for people to, uh, and society for, to accept people to control stress, what, uh, two of them are illegal and the third one will lead to alcohol dependency, or may lead to alcohol dependency, and will put weight gain on you and all sorts of stuff. So, at my nutrition we thought, let's come up with a great way to sort out stress. Now, many companies have tried this in the past, you know, you might have valerian root or calms or uh, extract of passion flower. I thought let's try and find a really effective way to do this. So we combine three uh, or two very effective ways of controlling stress with a third synergist which allows these compounds to move in and out of the cells more effectively. And due to something called um, like neural adaptation, and physiological adaptation, both the brain and the body will, with continued use, learn to adapt to stress better and better. Uh, this, could, this could lead to something as dramatic as, uh, for example, losing that spare tire, even without necessarily making any other dietary changes. Imagine, if the cortisol is trying to break down protein for energy to get away from that saber tooth tiger, but you're sat at your keyboard, where you're elevating your blood glucose, which then requires an elevation in insulin, which requires, which then results in that blood glucose getting stored as fat. But where's the blood glucose come from? Your precious muscle. So you get skinnier and fatter every day. So we can combat that. And then if you think about it, you go home and you're consuming however many hundred calories worth of alcohol, but you don't need to because you take two to three NeuroChill and suddenly your world is a little bit softer around the edges the couch seems a little bit more comfortable, but you're not in any way inhibited from operating heavy material, uh, machinery. You're not a uh, stone, for want of a better word. If there was an emergency, your capacity to function wouldn't be diminished. There's no safety issues. Uh, so in the long term, you know, in the short term, it's a winner. But in the long term, as I say, you can see dramatic results, uh, dramatic increases in, in performance because if your body is stressed subliminally when you're trying to sleep, you're not getting proper rest. If you're not getting proper rest, you're not going to get proper repair. If you don't get proper repair, you can't expect to maintain or improve your performance either in the gym or out of it, or at work, or even at home. This is why uh, we created Neurochill in the way we did, and this is why we believe it works so effectively.